Hello everybody, second video for the day. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, another interesting case. Um, this case actually was a patient from today who had presented to the office um, with a broken tooth. Now it wasn't causing her any pain. She didn't report that she was having any issues, having any issues with, you know, aching, throbbing, sensitivity, even though it was broken right at the gum line. So here's the, excuse me, the, uh, the panoramic x-ray here you can see the tooth obviously there's a lot going on here down around the, the root apex she's got a significant abscess developing around there and a lot of tooth decay so we opted to go ahead and do our best to try to save the tooth even though um, i understand many of you may not feel like that tooth is savable now I'm gonna uh, kind of give my rationale and some justification as to why I would recommend trying to save this tooth for this particular patient. And granted, there's a lot going on elsewhere. She really only wanted to focus on this one tooth. You know, we, we need to do some further investigation. There may be something going on here and she likely has some periodontal disease and certainly some missing teeth. But her focus for today was this tooth. So. This patient um, is undergoing active chemotherapy. Um, so there are certainly some risks with taking teeth out. Uh, now, certainly we could have, you know, had her go through her oncologist and have a really long discussion and, you know, all sorts of other, you know, medical consults about taking this tooth out and ultimately get um, clearance or not um, to do the treatment. Um, I had that conversation with her and we decided that we were going to do our best to save the tooth. Now, if we were going to get to the point where it wasn't savable then at all, savable at all, then I may have just completed the endo and sealed the tooth down below the gingiva um, just to prevent it from having to come out because of the high risk of ONJ based on her active chemo um, and uh, radiation that she's been undergoing. So. That being said, um, here's another uh, image of that tooth. You know, uh, visually here, you can definitely see some issues down around the root tip. You can get a feel for how significant that uh, decay was. And when we look at it, you know, measuring the level of the bone and comparing where this decay runs, I mean, that's borderline, borderline, borderline. Really, saving this tooth is, you know, going to be... Um, a matter of doing our best to be a hero. Um, now, I've done cases like this where we prepare the patient for the worst. You know, tell them, I'm going to do my best to save this tooth. This may not last very long. Um, this may be something that ultimately needs to come out. Um, but in her situation, like I mentioned with the chemo and radiation, she really needs to save this tooth as opposed to going through all of the issues and hoops and challenges and post-operative complication risks of taking it out. So, root canal, core buildup, and crown is what I'd recommended. Um, we talked about putting in pins and a post. Uh, and, you know, normally I like to use um, a fiber post and titanium pins. Um, but yeah, this, I mean, you can see here this, there's not a lot left of that tooth. So, here is the endo and the pins. Oftentimes, many of you have uh, been on my channel for a while know that what I like to do is prep the tooth, then design the crown and complete the endo while the crown is being made. In this particular situation with the need to put some pins and a post in there, that particular order needed to be switched up. So we did the endo here, we placed the post or the pins, then we placed a post, a fiber post, which is not in this x-ray. Um, and then we went ahead and built it up in composite. So if you count the pins, let's see if you can see all of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> That's a lot of pins for that tooth. You know, in dental school, I was trained that we needed one pin, one pin for each cusp. So that would have been two, maybe three on that tooth. Um, so I decided we're going to, you know, we're going to do a little bit of extra anchorage for this lady. She was um, in need of more pins than usual. Anyway, so six pins and a fiber post. Um, 
here's a little close up there and you can see I, I really like these particular pins you know you drill a pilot hole and then as you're placing the pins um, they shear off at the appropriate depth um, you can see I was close to perforating there the angulation um, and I've perforated in the past and I actually have a bridge case for a patient who um, I perforated out the mesial of the mesial abutment um, and I didn't realize it, I didn't notice it. Um, the pins still seemed to anchor at the appropriate depth. I didn't feel like I'd perforated. Um, a couple of days later when I was reviewing post-op x-rays because I was way behind, I noticed the perforation. Tried to get the patient back in. He didn't come back in until his um, periodontal maintenance visit and there was no increase in probing depth. You could barely detect the uh, pin coming through that mesial portion of the, you know, of the root surface and you know he's been fine it's i think we're going on two years now anyway so here it is kind of you know in a nutshell we've got the preoperative situation here the abscess the decay i had removed all the decay placed all the pins you know completed the endo um and here is the final post-op with the Smart crown in place and the composite core buildup six pins a post. Um, it's unfortunate I didn't ask the assistant to get the, you know, the post comes down. I think it was, you know, the, the whole canal, let me go back, this whole canal length was 16 millimeters. Um, so that pin I took down to 10 millimeters, you know, so that's probably here. I'm sorry, the post. Um, but we just don't have it. We don't have the entire post, which you can see here. You know, it probably ends somewhere here if you were to follow that. Um, anyway, so in the end, it, it turned out really nice. I did have to go quite a bit down below her gums. So she is going to end up with some sore gums. I did text her, and she seemed like she was doing really well. I didn't have any concerns. Um, I said it was a very pleasant appointment, which... You know, sometimes a root canal and a crown, especially for those of us who have a high fear of dentist, uh, dentists and dentistry, um, those can be unpleasant. So um, it was good that we were able to create a positive experience for her. So, you know, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, this is a case where, oh, we got a little extra cement here. Um, this is a case where, uh, you know, sometimes pushing beyond what we normally would do um, is necessary, um, especially given this particular patient's situation with chemo radiation therapy and you know the risk of having some significant problems if we were to eliminate this tooth. Now I'll do my best to follow up on this tooth and hopefully be able to provide some post-operative you know information for you. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a good case. Um, took about an hour and a half. You know, one of the nice things about using these Sierra Smart blocks is they mill really fast. And the marginal integrity is incredible. Um, I've actually got a Lava Ultimate uh, down here on number 19. Um, I've had it for about seven years. It was cemented with Fujisem. Um, and, of course, you know, 3M and the FDA has removed the crown indication from the Lava Ultimate. But mine's been holding strong, so I'm a firm believer in hybrid rest, uh, restorations. And I know that this particular Sarah Smart way outperforms the Lava Ultimate. So um, anyway, that's the case for the day. Once again, uh, I'd suggest um, sometimes in certain situations, stepping outside what we would normally feel comfortable doing um, in the interest of what may actually be the patient's best interest um, over what we might you know consider as far as falling in um falling into the the usual standard of care um sometimes we have to not bend the rules or break the rules but sometimes we have to consider a different way um, to get the patient uh, treated so anyway thanks for watching and um, hopefully i'll have some more videos for you here in the, in the next uh, few days